Welcome everybody. My name is Ryan Durfee. I'm going to be talking about how to scale your product management effectiveness using knowledge management. And before I begin, I'd like to say a quick thank you to the product school for giving me the opportunity to present on a topic on which I am very passionate. A little bit of background on me. I am currently a senior technical product manager with AWS working in the marketing and analytics space. Before that, I spent a number of years with Comcast Technology Solutions as a product manager working in the media and video delivery space. And prior to that, I ran a network operations center uh, for the CDN network for level three communications. My LinkedIn profile is on the slide. And I'll also mention a disclaimer. The views expressed here are my own and do not reflect those of my current or previous employers. So let's dive in and talk a little bit about product management. The first thing I would point out is that the thing that makes product management such an interesting profession is how many areas of the business that it touches from legal and regulatory to finance and budget to engineering and development, customer experience, sales and marketing. I can't think of one major portion of the business that product management doesn't touch. Now, the upside to that is that the profession is very exciting and interesting. You never run out of things to learn or uh, different things to get involved with. The challenge to that is the sheer volume of information you have to manage as a product manager to be effective in your role. You have to know a little bit about each element of the business and be able to talk about it intelligently and retain it over time. Uh, being a product manager can prove to be uh, additionally complex and uh, due to a number of additional factors. Uh, if you think about organizational size, you know, when I've worked in smaller organizations, I've worn multiple hats where I've had to fill different roles. Uh, that adds to the workload of the product manager. Um, if you are managing multiple product lines, that can also add uh, a lot of challenge as well as, you know, managing a small team of product managers to help with certain products. Um, and then there's always the, the side projects you get into either for your organization or personal passion projects or personal development. Uh, those can all add to the knowledge load that you carry as a product manager. So with that said, I'm going to ask you to do a, a little thought experiment with me and try to quantify what your current knowledge load is. And we'll think of that in terms of some tangible things. So. Uh, I ran a little thought exercise for myself and I thought about the last six months, you know, how many people have I interacted with, with in terms of contacts, how many links and documents have I interacted with in terms of learning my business or working on uh, projects that I'm involved with, how many day-to-day -day tasks have I completed, how many meetings have I participated in, uh, and I was a little shocked when the numbers showed up. Uh, I worked with 150 different people in the last six months. I've worked on uh, 200 plus documents. I've executed 350 day-to-day -day tasks and been involved in 200 plus meetings. That is a staggering amount of personal information to manage from day-to-day -day in a fairly short amount of time. And you can imagine how that scales over a number of years or even a decade of product management. So the next thing I would ask is that you consider your current scalability. With where you are today, could you take on another product line? Could you maybe start managing a small team or add a team member? And could you do you still have time to do uh, personal development product, projects or passion projects? And that sentiment leads me into why we're here today. So uh, thinking about how do we scale ourselves from a knowledge management perspective? Uh, on screen is one of my favorite quotes. Uh, Bill Gates stated, how you gather, manage, and use information will determine whether you win or lose. Now, the drama of winning or losing at a corporate scale aside, uh, I would paraphrase this statement uh, for product managers into how you gather, manage, and use your personal knowledge will determine both your effectiveness and scalability as a product manager. Uh, I've found this to be true in just about every role I've uh, I've done for a company and uh, especially true for the product management role. So now let's think about how we manage our day-to-day -day knowledge. Um, 
I drew a little sketch. This is kind of the, the default knowledge model that most of us use uh, coming into a company. Um, and it's a, it's a traditional hub and spoke model. Uh, you're basically the hub and you interact with a bunch of different software applications and documents to store your day-to-day -day knowledge. You probably have multiple applications for contacts. Uh, you probably have a bunch of links in your browser. You probably have a bunch of documents and SharePoints or a folder file system. Uh, for tasks, uh, a lot of people are using specialized apps or JIRAs. Uh, you might have them in a spreadsheet. Um, and then notes can be all over the place from you know, documents to specialized uh, applications. And I'd ask you to think about um, a couple of specific examples and how well this particular system scales. Uh, I'm often reminded when uh, a LinkedIn contact pops up on my screen as a, as a notification and I don't recognize that contact and I, I pull up my LinkedIn system and I have a thousand contacts in there and I can't remember where I got half of these contacts. I don't remember what contacts they were in. I don't remember when I made contact with them. Um, but that gives you some idea of the challenge of managing information over time. Um, another way to think about this is, you know, when a new team member joins your team and you're tasked with uh, getting them caught up on your current uh, projects. Uh, think about all the systems you'd have to go into to get them appropriately caught up. How would you get them all their documents? How would you get them links to all the key systems they need access to? Um, how would you inform them of the timeline or history of your product? Uh, how would you familiarize them with the different people that you're interacting with or that you've interacted with over time? Uh, and as you can see, it's it's quite challenging uh, when you think about all the different uh, applications and uh, discrete pieces of information that you have to share from a personal knowledge perspective. So now let's think about the challenges of this hub and spoke type model. And the first challenge I would point out is that the tools we're using to manage our day-to-day -day knowledge, they're separated. They don't communicate with each other. The data within them, it's, it's difficult to relate it to one another. Um, if you ever have to collate or report on it or share your knowledge, uh, you're left uh, digging into multiple documents, multiple systems, uh, which are spread all over the place. The second major challenge that I see with this traditional knowledge model is scalability. Uh, with you sitting as the hub, uh, it becomes an exercise in how many connections can you remember between all of your uh, personal pieces of information and how long can you maintain that, that memory? I personally find that uh, my, my RAM memory is, is pretty limited. Um, I do have longer term memory, but I often need uh, cues to jog that memory. So my own personal scalability is, is very limited in this respect is over time, just like the LinkedIn example, you acquire this knowledge or these contacts or these documents, uh, and it becomes challenging to maintain all of that in your uh, readily accessible memory. So now I wanna introduce a couple of uh, concepts that have really helped me to scale my own personal knowledge management over the years uh, beyond the standard model. The first idea is that it's a lot easier to manage knowledge if you can consolidate it in one location. Uh, bringing it all together in a, in a single system uh, just makes for, for easier scalability. And the other idea I'm gonna introduce is the idea that you can categorize and relate all of your knowledge to one another. And this helps with, with contexts and relationships and um, uh, remembering information over time. So the first concept, consolidating knowledge, uh, I've tried this a number of ways over the years. I've tried taking copious amounts of notes and documents. I've tried various applications. Uh, but at the end of the day, the thing that I've learned is that if I can tabularize my data, uh, things like documents that I'm working on, uh, links to different resources, applications, my contacts, my tasks, my meeting notes, uh, key decisions that have made, been made on my product. If I can put that all into tables in a single application, uh, it becomes significantly easier to work with. Um, so 
putting it in a single application, structuring it into discrete records, columns, you know, validating your data, all the things that kind of go along with, uh, with data management. And then uh, you also get the advantage of being able to timestamp data as it comes into your, your single application. So you can get a, a timestamped record over time uh, that helps you uh, also structure your knowledge. The second concept is the benefits related to categorizing and relating your data. So your categories are your essentially your memory key to uh, finding information and relating it. Um, and categories or taxonomy could be you know, pro different projects you're working on, uh, different product lines, different teams, job functions, administrative functions. Uh, all your work and all your personal knowledge can be broken down into groups of these and that can tie into um, things like uh, meeting notes and contacts and tasks and documents and links. And these knowledge relationships, uh, they go every which way across the model. So uh, meeting notes can be related to a certain project you're working on, can be related to certain contacts that were in that meeting. Tasks you're working on can be related to documents that uh, either are an output of that task or an input to that task. And it can also be related to different contacts that you're working on tasks with or for. Um, documents are often related to projects and, and various contacts from where they came. So if we bring these two concepts together, what do we achieve? We move from our original hub and spoke type knowledge model uh, to a more of a point-to-point -point network. And what I'm describing here, if we combine the, this idea that we're bringing together uh, our knowledge in a single application, and then we're relating it, we're effectively building a knowledge management database. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to, you know, use a database application, but that's effectively what we're, what I'm suggesting you create here. Um, and this solves two of our original problems. Uh, first, you're no longer the, the hub in the model. You're no longer responsible for remembering all the connections. The connections are actually documented inside the model, and your model is now timestamped because as you've entered data into your system, um, it's all been tabulated and stamped. So you're no longer sitting at the center having to remember years and years of information um, and how everything links to one another. And the other problem we're addressing is the fact that our traditional knowledge management applications don't relate to one another. They don't communicate with one another. So with the, all of your knowledge in a single model, uh, you can now do things like search and uh, filter and, and um, collate all your knowledge in one place. So the overall benefits of, of switching from the traditional knowledge management model to a model more like this, you get scalability. You know, you're no longer the hub. You have lifespan. Uh, this model can live on forever, uh, regardless of how good your day-to-day -day memory is. Um, it's built on taxonomy and relations. That means all of your personal knowledge is connected to the rest of your knowledge uh, through categories, through relationships. You can filter, sort, and search on the entire knowledge base, which means you can pull information. You can pull every note you've ever taken on a particular product. You can have um, every contact that you've ever worked with on a particular project. You can collate all that data and report on it and hand it over to other people and share it. And then you also get the chronology, the timestamps element of it, so that you can filter down to certain time periods or um, understand when you learned a piece of information. So let's assume for a moment that I'm a better salesperson than I really am, and I've convinced you that you want to explore this idea as far as how to manage your knowledge. Um, I've experimented over probably a decade with, with some of these concepts. Um, I've tried spreadsheets. I've tried uh, hybrid spreadsheet applications. I've tried uh, true databases. Uh, there's pros and cons to them all. Um, I would say if you go down this route or want to experiment in this area, uh, start out with ease of use. I would definitely recommend you start in a spreadsheet application. Uh, it just makes for much easier uh, data input. Uh, a lot of the modern spreadsheets are cloud-based, highly redundant, which they didn't used to be. 
Uh, you can create uh, relationship, basic relationships between data. Um, I would definitely say that a database, a true database is overly complex and the user interfaces to those are uh, really problematic if you're just getting started. Uh, there are some newer uh, hybrid tools that are sort of in between a spreadsheet and a database, which uh, you could potentially use. Uh, I would get your data into a single application first, into a spreadsheet, and then explore um, porting that data into uh, more advanced applications that you can play with. So once you've selected a tool, the next step is kind of building out a basic set of tables. Uh, the things I've found that are uh, obviously uh, shared across every job discipline, uh, you're going to have a table of categories. These are your projects or products lines that you're working on. These are your administrative functions and uh, different platforms that you need to gather data on. You're also going to have contacts, documents. Uh, I store links to all my documents and um, links to all my different applications in a, in a documents table. Uh, and then you're going to have day-to-day -day tasks. Uh, I also build out a, uh, a status table that uh, relates back to my tasks. But the idea here is uh, to get started, you're going to build a basic set of tables, and then you're going to start working on your habit forming because it is a process to go from putting all your information into your standard applications to uh, moving over to a, to a new system. Um, and if you're going to do it right, you really need to try as much as you can to abandon duplicate copies of data because the data entry in managing your knowledge this way, uh, it does take quite a bit of effort. And if you're putting stuff in two different places, you're, you're never going to maintain the habit piece. Um, you can still store uh, information in other places. I still use a, a handful of browser bookmarks uh, just for speed. Um, but for the most part, all my major links to, to documents, applications, I store in my knowledge base. Um, and then there's going to be mandatory systems that you have to use, like ticketing. Um, you're still going to use those, but uh, you know, to the extent possible, you want to keep all of your knowledge in one place. The next key to going this route is creating a taxonomy or categorization system. Uh, and there's kind of a few things I've learned over the years. Um, building a first and second layer to your taxonomy is incredibly helpful. Uh, going much beyond that is, uh, it gets wasteful really quickly and I've found that uh, I don't really use more than two layers. If it goes down to a third layer, it becomes overly complex. Uh, taxonomy, as far as building out your, your categorization system, I found that using a synthetic hierarchy um, where you actually only have a single layer to your taxonomy, but it contains two different elements um, is incredibly helpful, especially if you're using simpler tools like um, spreadsheets or hybrid databases uh, and you are not a proficient database user. Uh, having your taxonomy and categorization system in a single column just makes it far easier. And you can make a single column act as though it were two columns of data. The other thing I would suggest is brevity in, uh, in creating your taxonomy. Uh, these are going to be used as labels, as columns all over your data. Uh, so to the extent that you can shorten your taxonomy and keep it brief, uh, you're going to reap benefits from that. The next step is tailoring your database to your needs. So adding tables that are custom to whatever product lines you're working on, whatever teams you're working with, whatever platforms you have, uh, you're going to start uh, building out new tables uh, week over week to help you with your specific workload. Uh, you're also going to find, you're going to need to refine your columns. There's going to be uh, uh, days where you're adding columns. There's going to be days you find that uh, you're not using columns you've created and that they can just go away. Uh, but it is a process over time. And then once you've kind of built out the fundamentals, you can start creating filtered reports and data views into your knowledge database. And this is where you start to really reap the rewards of keeping everything in one place. Um, I have different reports like uh, active tasks that are in priority order. Um, they're sorted by their projects. I have uh, project contact lists, so all the people that I work with on a particular um, elements or a product line that I'm working on. 
I also um, have a table of active updates that are sorted by category and project. So these are updates on the product lines I'm working on that are most relevant uh, to the recent past. And it's uh, information I hand out to my boss or information I hand out to teammates on a regular basis. So let's do one last thought exercise. What if you had all of your data in a knowledge management database? What if it was consolidated and organized? What if it was rapidly accessible across months or years? What if you could easily collate that data and report on it and share it with your teammates? What would change for you? Would you get more done? Would you be more effective as a product manager? How would it change your business impact? I think the answer to these questions is fairly self-evident, but I've found over the years that taking an approach like this and organizing my data really well has made a huge impact on my ability to scale my own uh, product management skills. I've been able to take on additional products. I've been able to manage small teams. Um, I'm not saying it's been easy or perfect, but uh, it's certainly changed my ability to get things done. And then final thoughts. Uh, the quote on the screen is something I've found uh, true time and time again, and that's that organization is a journey and not a destination. There's no one right way to do knowledge management and to scale your product management effectiveness. Uh, this is just one way that I've learned over the years that's helped me quite a bit. Um, I would encourage you to experiment and share. Everybody's different. Uh, you may uh, play around with some of these ideas for a while and find a, a different uh, way to go about this. But if you do find something that works really well, please share it back with the, the product community. And the last thing I would encourage you to think about over the long haul is uh, our organizations have very similar challenges to knowledge management uh, as the individuals within those organizations. Um, and I would encourage you to think about how do you apply these concepts to your business as a whole? Now, is there a better way for you and your company to organize your knowledge uh, to make it more accessible to uh, the staff within that organization? So that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope these concepts help you in some way.